Hey guys, we're talking about the cue stay back today and how it can be really detrimental to hitters of all ages. So I have three videos lined up here of me doing three different swings um, from different starting positions from where I began my rotation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna time them from when my rotation begins to when my rotation gets to half turn. Um, and we'll take a look and see what's faster. And then we can kind of make it a, a little bit of a decision about why it's a bad thing um, to keep our weight back when we're doing our step. So this first one is gonna be the most drastic case. You can kind of see that I almost am moving like I'm trying to test the water of the pool so all of my weight stays really, really far back. So my back leg and back shoulder are kind of like in alignment and you can kind of see that my knee essentially bumps that line as well, okay? So my knee is really stacked over my back leg, maybe not 100% stacked, but very, very close. And what you'll see when I go to start my turn is in order to get my pelvis to rotate, which is the first step in any high level swing, um, in order to get my pelvis to rotate, I need to slide my weight forward so I at least come 50-50 on my feet. So I have 50% weight on my back foot, 50% weight on my front foot, which then allows me to rotate my body. Problem is, is because I'm stuck back on this back side, when I go to go forward really aggressively, my forward moves try to get my weight to my front foot and my turn kind of blend. And what ends up happening is my head slides forward and you get like this lunging look that you usually see in youth hitters um, that load incorrectly. So let's take a look at that and we're gonna time that real fast and we'll also look at the head movement. So let's first decide when, when I'm trying to begin my rotation. And really it's right there because you can see me start to shift my weight, okay? So I'm gonna slap a timer right there on the ground and we'll see how long it takes to get to that half turn spot, okay? So I'm a half turn about right here, and which is uh, 4.6, or sorry, 0.46 seconds. And essentially when you think about that as in terms of like what a pitcher is doing, that essentially means that we'd have to start our swing when the pitcher still has the ball if the pitcher's throwing at a high velocity. A 90 mile an hour fastball takes about 0.4 seconds to get to the plate. So this is a bad pattern and this is really gonna cause a lot of problems with what we're trying to do in our swing. And the other thing here is that when my rotation is going, so let's look at it from like right here. So if I drew a circle around my head, you can see that my head really moves out of that circle. And that's because I'm trying to shift and rotate at the same time, which makes my head move a ton and creates a lot of really bad stuff in my swing. So once again, this is not what we're looking for and not ideal. It takes too long. My head moves too much. Um, not good. So this one I would label like an F or grade like an F um, on a standard grading scale. So this one is going to be more like a C. So what you're going you're gonna to see here when you compare it to what my last one was, I move more forward. So you can see that my hip relative to where my foot is, is right here, but my knee is still pretty far back. And if we zoom in here on my back foot, which the color or the uh, video quality isn't perfect, but if I zoom back on this back foot, you can kind of see the inside part of my foot is almost showing. So you can tell that the weight is kind of on the outside part of my back foot. Now, when I set that up, what also has to happen in that case is my turn is starting about right here. You can see it beginning. I need to shift my knee forward to get my weight more to my front leg in order to begin my turn as well. So if we time that, we're looking right here. That's when my turn is starting or when I'm trying to start my turn. So I'll slap a timer on it here. So that's about 0.33 to half turn. So still not great. Um, that said, we are going from stops. So these numbers are gonna be a little inflated. If we were going all together, um, these numbers would be a little bit lower because we wouldn't have to go from static to kinetic. We would go from kinetic to kinetic um, as far as energy is concerned. So. Um, you know, the numbers decrease a little bit because of that um, flow of energy. But um, let's look at the last one here. And this is a more ideal step. And this is why it's so important that hitters not use the stay back cue or at least interpret it literally. So here you go. You can kind of see the difference here is that my back leg is on a much greater angle. So from foot to hip, it's on an angle like this. And then that's kind of what we're looking like here. So we're shifted. Uh, my body is still lean back a little bit, but my weight um, is probably um, at least 50-50 on my feet. Um, so there's no shifting necessary in order for my swing to begin. And that's really the most important thing. So instead of seeing a shift forward, 
the instant move is that my pelvis turns. And because my pelvis is turning instantly, that makes my reaction time much better. When we look at it here, 0.23 to half turn versus the point. Um, three, three to half turn that we just saw a second ago. So it's super important guys that we don't stay back, that we move our body forward. We can lean our body back, but we need to move our body forward in our step so we can get to this position. So when we go to swing, our pelvis turn can be instant and we don't need any pelvis slide to stimulate our turn.